Welcome to our lecture online and now for the really interesting part. Notice on the previous two videos we found the minimum force required to keep the block from sliding down if the force was parallel to the incline that ended up being 164 newtons. Then we found the minimum force required if the force was perpendicular to the incline adding additional frictional force to, to prevent the block from sliding down and that took 546 newtons. So definitely it took less force pushing this way compared to this way. But is there less force required if we push at some other angle, not parallel to the incline, not perpendicular, but somewhere in between? And so let's say that we're pushing with a force F at some angle, let's call it phi, relative to the parallel of the incline. Hmm. That means that we have two components of that force, one component which helps push the block upward and the other component which adds additional weight, so to speak, on the block pushing down against the incline, increasing the friction force. So it could be that at some angle we do even require less force and we're going to find what that angle is. So this, in this video we're going to find the angle at which we require even less force than 164 newtons to push to keep the block from sliding down. So again what we need to do here, we already put in the weight of the block, the, the force of the weight perpendicular to the, uh, to the incline, the weight of the, for, the, the, the component of the weight parallel to the incline, then of course we need the normal force. So let's draw that in here. So this here would be the normal force. And what would the normal force be equal to? Well, the normal force would be opposing this force and this force. So in this case, the normal force is equal to mg cosine of theta plus the perpendicular component of this force, which would be f times the sine of phi. Notice that's the different angle. This phi angle is the angle relative to the, to the parallel of the plane. And this here is the angle of the plane and oh I forgot to draw that one that would be this angle right here the angle theta which is the angle between the incline and the horizontal okay that's the normal force which means the normal force creates a friction force and so the friction force would be the force up here this is the friction force and by definition the friction force is equal to the normal force times mu and of course in this case that would be mu sub s and the normal force is this force right here so that would be equal to mg cosine of theta plus f times the sine of phi and the whole thing multiplied by mu sub s. So that's the friction force which would prevent the block from sliding down. In addition to that we have the force f cosine of phi which also would prevent the block from sliding down but we'll get to that in just a moment. So now we write F net is equal to the mass times acceleration. Now in this case again since we're simply providing the block from sliding down the acceleration is going to be equal to zero. That means that F net is going to be equal to zero. Now what is the net force? The net force is all the forces aiding what you're trying to do, which is preventing the block from sliding, minus all the forces opposing what you're trying to do, which is the forces that will try to get the block from sliding down. So this will be the forces that are aiding, minus the forces that are opposing, and that should equal to zero because there's no acceleration. So let's write that up here again. Uh, forces aiding. So what are the forces aiding? Well, the forces aiding would be the F cosine of phi and the friction force. So it would be F times the cosine, oh, I, it's not a subscript of course, let me get rid of this here. Okay, F times the cosine of phi, that's one of the aiding forces, plus the other aiding force would be the friction force, which is mg cosine of theta times mu sub s, plus f times the sine of phi times mu sub s minus the force opposing which is going to be mg sine theta mg sine theta okay and that equals zero and i'll put a line like this so we don't get too confused there i'm running out of space okay 
Now notice we're looking for equation giving us the force. We're looking for the minimum force. So we're going to keep these two on one side and move these two to the other side. So we end up with F times the cosine of phi plus F times the sine of phi multiplied times mu sub s is equal to, moving this to the other side becomes positive, mg times the sine of theta, and moving this across that become minus mg cosine of theta times mu sub s, like this. Okay, and then we solve for f by itself. So f is now going to become equal to mg times the sine of theta minus mg times the cosine of theta times mu sub s, and this should look very familiar from our previous videos. We almost remember what the numerical values were, and then we take the whole thing and we divide it by uh, the cosine of phi plus the sine of phi times mu sub s. Okay, now numerical values for this, I believe this was 286.8 and that was 100, well, I almost remember what it was, but we should work it out anyway, right? So F is equal to, that would be 500 newtons times the sine of 35 degrees minus 500 newtons times the cosine of 35 degrees times mu sub s and the whole thing divided by the cosine of phi minus, oh, plus the sine of phi times mu sub s. Now remember, what's in the numerator here, oh, I guess I should put in what this was equal to, 0 0.3, like that. And remember that this was equal to the 164 newtons that we calculated in the previous video. So F is equal to 164 newtons divided by the cosine of phi plus the sine of phi times mu sub s. Okay, now, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the minimum force. How do we find the minimum force? Well, we take the derivative and we set it equal to zero. So we take df, d phi, we take the derivative with respect to the angle that we're looking for. We're looking for the angle, the angle phi, which will give us the minimum force. So we're taking the derivative of the force relative to that angle. So to take the derivative of a quotient, we take the denominator, the cosine of phi, plus the sine of phi times mu sub s, times the derivative of the numerator. But the numerator is a constant, so the derivative of the numerator is equal to zero. So that part simply goes away. Minus the numerator, 164 newtons, times the derivative of the denominator. The derivative of the cosine is the minus sine, and the derivative of the sine is the cosine, so plus the cosine of phi times mu sub s. And the whole thing divided by the denominator squared, which is the cosine of phi plus the sine of phi multiplied times mu sub s, and the whole thing squared. Now that looks a little scary, but not to worry, because what we're going to do now is we're going to set that equal to zero. I noticed that my black pen is kind of uh, running out of ink, so let's try this pen over here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set the derivative df d phi equal to zero. Now what happens when we set a fraction equal to zero? Remember, this here is already zero, so we don't have to worry about that because we're multiplying by zero. But if we set a fraction equal to zero, that means that the numerator of the fraction must equal zero. We don't really have to worry about the denominator. If the numerator is zero, the whole fraction is equal to zero. So that means when we set the derivative equal to zero, we're going to set that equal to that right there. So minus times the minus, and then we get 164 newtons, multiplied times the sine of phi minus the cosine of phi times mu sub s. Like this. And of course, since the whole thing is set equal to zero, we don't need that constant right there which means that this must equal zero to have a minimum force. So let's plug that in here. So we have zero is equal to the sine of phi minus, and let's translate mu sub s is 0 0.3, so 0 0.3 times the cosine of phi. Now we have to solve this equation for phi. So we're going to move this to the other side. 
So we end up at minus the sine of phi equals minus the cosine of phi times 0 0.3. Bring that to the other side. We have minus times of minus is plus. So we have the sine of phi over the cosine of phi equal to 0 0.3 or the tangent of phi equals 0 0.3 or phi is equal to the inverse tangent of 0 0.3. That means with a calculator, we can find the angle at which we require the minimum force. So 0.3, take the inverse tangent, we get 16.7 degrees. So 16.7 degrees, that's the angle that will require the least amount of force. In other words, if we push the box at an angle of 16.7 degrees relative to the parallel of the incline, we will actually need less force than 164 newtons to keep the block from sliding. So what appeared to be intuitions that, well, if I just push like this, would that require the minimum force? The answer is no. It's actually at an angle of 16.7 degrees relative to the incline that will give us a smaller force required to keep the block from sliding down. And that is how that works. Of course, you may want to know now what that number is. Well, since I'm out of board space, we'll do another video. <laughs> yes, I planned it. I figured I was going to run out of board space. Pretty clever, huh? <laughs> All right. Stay tuned for the next video to find out what the number will be required. So we found the direction. We now need to find the magnitude. We'll do that in the next video.